Hey, what's up, everybody? Thanks for clicking on the video. This is David Pendleton, and I am bringing you holes number six, seven, eight, and nine of the Winter Major Division. This is the Winter Major Tournament. This is going to be the Pro Division, I should say. So this is going to wrap up the front nine. Both of my Pro accounts are actually sitting at the exact same score with a minus 15. A little disappointed, though, that on this account, I didn't pick up the uh, Eagle on hole number six like I did my other account. But I've got some great replays to show to show you here i hope that you're doing really well and let's just go ahead and hop right on into it so we're going to go to hole number six let me get this right which is going to be right here and so here's how we're going to approach hole number six okay now there are two ways that you could play this particular wind angle the first way is going to be the way that i'm going to show you okay but if you're worried about the drive that i'm going to give you i can't give you specifics but you could uh, look to land on this area and then hit your ball right up here, okay? You might stop somewhere in this red zone, and then you're still going to have a thorn shot to pin. Um, so that's one way to go. I don't know what the thorn, the, the second thorn shot is going to play at, but uh, that is a safer drive than what I'm about ready to show you. But for everybody else who's ready to go big or go home, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go three bars, a side spin to the right, and then we're going to go with six top if you have it, okay? Now, obviously, if you were to play with the power four or power five ball, you're better off, especially if you have good wind resistance. But here you see that I've, I'm sitting up at the plus 13 yard mark, so that way when I go to pull my rings, I don't pull into overpower, which is going to make my shot more accurate. I go with half a ball of OP, half a ball of curl to the right, and I do hit a perfect ball. You'll see that we don't really come close to the rough at all on that first bounce. If anything, we come close to that rough right there. So that's what happened on my other account. I hit a great left on the drive, and I got stuck in that rough. I hit a perfect shot out of there, too, and almost made it for the eagle, which would have been nice, but uh, I didn't. But either way, this is shot number two, okay? Now, when it comes to shot number two on this hole, it always plays much better with the slider. I did play it with the slider. I think I played it like, I don't, I don't remember, it was like 12, 14, 18%, something like that. Um, it comes out to be the same thing, 20% at minimum. Now, that would be, of course, if you got in that same area on the drive that I did. So you can try it 20% at minimum, or you can play it 10% with slider if you know how to count rings with your thorn. Uh, not something I'm going into right now. Uh, maybe maybe I'll make a video on something like that down the road. I always say that, but I never have time. But <laughs> regardless, one bar of backspin, it is important here that you do play this shot with half a bar of side spin to the left. Here, I do make that adjustment. And with a perfect ball, it does go in for the eagle. I hope that you're able to pick up this hole. Uh, you know, I don't think a lot of players who are playing with free-to-play balls are going to pick up this hole as much as others are who are willing to spend up and use money balls. Uh, because with the right money ball, you could send this, you could send the drive pretty far up the fairway, which I've seen um, quite a few times against my accounts when I was practicing and when it came to real mode. Um, so everybody was using a money ball on that hole. All right, now we're going to go into this particular hole. Uh, this one, you know, really disappointed that I didn't pick up the hole in one because this is just a great wind angle to pick up the hole in one on. We're going to go with a little bit more than six backspin. And this is like 1.8 side spin to the left. It's a little bit of a weird side spin. I typically try to keep things as even as possible. But when I was applying two bars of side spin to the left, it was going too far to the left. When I made it just one and a half, then it wasn't coming in enough. So it's like this 1.8-ish is where it needs to be. And then we need the offset to the right, which you're gonna see these green squares here that I'm aiming on. I didn't mean to keep the video going, so there it is right there. There's the green square that I'm aiming on, and you can see exactly where at on these green squares I'm aiming. It's always best to look at the smooth end part of the ball guideline, the one that's fully developed and flat. <clears throat> here, uh, very low wind. Uh, not too often you get winds in the four mile, in the fours, on pro, I mean, I know we're using a kingmaker, which is a good wind-resistant ball, but so you typically get it in the five. So very low here. And we're just going to leave it with perfect speed um, on the right-hand side of the cup. Now, in higher winds, 
I've missed this to the left of the cup. So, you know, I wish I could have found a consistent, you know, hole in one, but this gets us very, very close. Just little tweaks, uh, whether you should move your target left or right, depending on how high or low your wind is. You saw here that I had low wind, which means I should have set my target up a little bit more to the left-hand side because I'm not getting that strong of a wind push to push us into the hole. So I know I spent a little bit more time on that par three than I normally do, but I do think you're able to pick up a good hole-in-one opportunity there. Okay, this is going to take us to hole number eight. Got to eagle this hole right here. And as a matter of fact, um, well, I guess one opponent did eagle it, but he, hit it, he eagled it out of the sand. But when I was practicing this hole, I was eagling it consistent, and my other my opponents were not at all. Okay, so here we go. Let's go. Uh, here's what we're looking to do. Rewind this because I got diarrhea of the mouth. I'm talking too much right now. All right, blue at the rock when stretched out to max. So people are like, what does that mean? So look when I stretch out my club to max. Look at my blue ring. Look at the right-hand top side of the blue ring. See how it's touching the rock? Now, this is with an extra mile nine, but, you know, it's going to be somewhere in that range with your club, okay? So blue ring touching the rock, and then I just let it relax. I apply my spins at two bars of side spin to the left, and I put about 1.1 bars of back spin. Then I pull my rings, which is going to be 10% at max. See how I'm at the plus 30? When I pull my rings, I go to the plus 16. We want to push it back up at least 10 yards, okay? You could do a little bit more if you wanted to, but 10 yards is pretty consistent. Again, a little bit more than half a ball of OP, a little bit less than half a ball of curl to the left. The curl is pretty important because that's going to give you the kick off the fairway right here and roll you towards the cup. Now, I would love to hear if anybody picks up a hole in one on this hole because typically every time I show this approach, uh, there is somebody who gets it, sends it to me on Messenger, or just puts it in the comments like, hey, they're pretty pumped up because I got the ace on a par four. That would be huge in a final round. Takes us here to hole number five. Hole number five, I went ahead and just played it with a Titan. I mean, we're getting a great uh, tailwind push here. Now, I will say that I played it pretty conservative because I wanted to make sure I picked up the eagle. And so what I mean by that is, is I went ahead and adjusted 10% at max, and then I just let it sit right there. Then I went absolute full OP because I knew that without pushing back up to max, that it would be easy to hit a full overpowered drive. Now, if you want to get more yards, which would be a lot better for you on shot number two, you could push this shot back up to max or maybe push it up another 10 yards, whatever you want to do. But if you do that, now, of course, that's going to make your needle shaky, which is going to be a lot harder to hit perfect. Typically on this hole, a great left or a great right can be deadly because normally if you're using a free-to-play ball, uh, power three ball, you're not normally able to ever save it um, out of the rough here by getting to the green. Now, you can save it by chipping in with your inbringer or your thorn, but obviously we'd rather be putting in uh, for the eagle or taking a shot like this, trying to get ourselves the albatross. I do, I do come, you know, decently close here to the alba uh, with this setup. It just comes up a little bit short, so I needed a little bit more top spin, you know, which I was surprised because six mile per hour wind with where I was set up at, I really thought that I would get the wind push to at least get to the hole or go a little long, but it did come up a tad short. But hey, anyways, this is going to wrap up the uh, front nine on pro. I hope that you're doing really well. Uh, minus 15 on both my accounts for me. That's not good enough in pro tier three to compete for a top spot. But, um, you know, hopefully I can have a good uh, back nine as well. So thanks for watching, everybody. Please subscribe. Please hit that thumbs up, and I'll talk to you later.